Hey, Mikhail. What are we doing today? We're going to put some siding on the barn. All right, let's go. So this is our barn. Uh, we bought the property. The property came with only the barn, uh, no house. Uh, we'll have more about that later on in their videos. But today we're going to be working on work, uh, this is the siding on the barn. And this is a clapboard sided barn that uh, we got a barn grant three years ago from the state of Vermont. So thank you Vermonters for uh, helping us keep this piece of historic uh, architecture in our community. This is known as the Red Barn in, in Burke here. And it's a landmark. People drive by, they know it. And um, it would, a lot of our fellow uh, neighbors and everybody in town was happy to see us kind of save this barn. It was on the verge of collapse. Uh, the barn grant allowed us to put a new roof on it, to replace a lot of the rotting timbers and fix the foundation. So now over the next two or three years, we're gonna slowly pick away at the siding here. Uh, you can see this side of the barn has gotten the bottom half done and next year we'll rent a lift to do the top part. Um, today we're gonna be working on this side over here. We're gonna try and get this side finished up before winter, and um, that way at least it's weather tight and water's not gonna get into the substructure. But uh, we're gonna work on this today for a little while, so more to come on the type of siding we're using. We are staying historical though, um, and we're gonna have some really cool links to uh, how this siding was made. But we have 10,000 lineal feet of siding to put on this barn over the next year and a half. So let's get to it. Today we're putting up quarter sawn clapboard. Now you don't see a lot of quarter sawn clapboard out there anymore because it's kind of an old school technique and the lengths that they come in are just five or six feet. So very short boards, um, but there's a lot of benefits to, the, to this old style um, quarter sawn clapboards. One is that it's a different cut of grain and we'll have a little demonstration or a diagram of how that's cut on the log, um, but it allows for more stability to the wood. It also allows, um, paint to adhere better because uh, you're painting over the space between the rings not flat on the rings so usually boards are cut you know kind of lap down these are cut like around the clock type thing and I'll show you what that looks like the um, so they're short lengths easy to work with but a little more time consuming um, but overall I think it's good historical perspective on the barn you know the clapboards that are on this barn now have been there over a hundred years and you know they're still you know you can still other than a little bit of paint coming off them and some holes in them. You know, they're the back side of the barn, the north side is still as good as it was put up. So south side, a little more damage. You can see we're strapping this clapboard. Um, I really prefer strapping siding away. I think of siding as like the raincoat over the building. Um, any water that does get through the siding doesn't um, just sit there. So if you're painting a building, um, you don't get that wet backside as the front side dries, which causes curling. So we strap every foot here. Um, I've strapped both the barn, my house, and my garage, and it's just a little extra step for a little extra cost that I think goes a long way to create this uh, rain barrier for the building. Here's one of the clapboards we use. Um, you can see the grain is, is the rings are stacked up on each other here, so um, you could essentially tell how old this tree was by counting up these rings. And likewise on the end grain here, you can see each ring is stacked up, stacked up. What this does is it really prevents the wood from curling, so you're not gonna see this board curl at all, um, but when you put paint on this, the paint absorbs into each one of these rings going up through here and really adheres uh, to, the, to the wood. So a much more stable way of cutting it, um, and it was really fun. We got to go up to where these clapboards were made and see the process, and it's an old school um, way of doing it. We'll, we'll put a link here somewhere um, about how they cut these boards. But we have, like I said, 10,000 lineal feet of these, which are all gonna go up on that barn in a little bit here. So we're gonna get ready here, we got a ladder set up. Um, but we're only going up to here this winter. Um, we'll seal it off so no rain gets behind it. Um, but then next year we'll get more on it.
All right, here we go. Finished this side. We're going to leave this for the winter now. Um, it's going to have to wait. It's getting too cold. This is probably our last 40 degree day to be outside holding the nails in our hands. One of the things you're going to hear us, me talk about a bunch around here is what's what I consider lean farming or very efficient farming. You can see here that here's one example of it. Our scraps go right into a wheelbarrow. So we're not spending 10 minutes picking up the scraps at the end of the project. And those 10 minutes add up. If you do that, you know, 10 times a year, that's 100 minutes where you could be doing something else. So when we, when I plan projects around here, I'm trying to plan them efficiently so we're not repeating things or having to do things. So lean farming, you can look it up. Um, it's about, you know, not having to go look for a screwdriver, not having to run around and do things. All those minutes over the year add up and I'd rather spend an hour out mountain biking or doing some new experiment on the farm than picking up wood off the ground that I didn't have to do. So lean, efficient work, um, saves time for the farmer in the long run. Um, so here we are. So again, siding is done. This is going to stay this way now for the fall. Um, and the rest of this fall, winter, and next spring we'll do a lift on it and get up a little higher on it and finish it off.